great, great pleasure to introduce and bring on Boon Seong, who's the managing director and founder of the Align Group. Yes. The Align Group. So Boon Tiong, um, he's the brainchild behind the National Workforce Happiness Survey. Go visit his company website. Not now, please. <laughs> Not now, later. Because something really unique over there. I know I also did a uh, meet and greet employer session, you know, just just earlier this week or did last week? Last week. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I know. Yeah. yeah. It's like I... I Never mind. Okay, so see, this is one of those things about working from home, right? Yeah, there's even a meme about it. It's like you wake up, you think, okay, which day is it today? Um, yeah, so, so it's really wonderful because happiness is something very close to my heart as well. And so he has done a lot of things over there. It's, it's so remarkable. The Align Group has been a thought leader, you know, in the organize, in the OD space. So those of us in HR would know, you know, OD is the ultimate area to help other organizations bring in best practices and how cool is that he runs an organization who pivots around happiness and he's helping other companies to actually adopt that i find that really you know encouraging and i want to be part of that journey too and so align group there's a lot about align group i'll, I'll just pass the floor to boon Xiong. And the title which I gave him, I practically gave him, can I start a business from scratch? Okay, so I'm going to stop here <laughs> and then let Boon Xiong, uh, Boon Xiong take over. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you, Eileen. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining these sessions. Um, I don't know whether I can give an answer how to start a business from scratch, um, but um, I'll do my best to relate my own experience. And hopefully, uh, there are certain pointers that you can pick up along the way. And um, I think I always tell people this, right? When a student is ready, the teacher appears. So sometimes it's not so much about what I said, but it's more about what you pick up given the circumstances that you have right now in your life as well. Yeah, I just thought like, um, I think Eileen, thanks for introducing me. Um, I mean, to be fair, I've done different roles, but I think a lot of these things when it first started, it was really, I forced myself to it. Okay, I used to tell people that I can't even present in front of a group of six people. I still remember I, 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 I'm an introvert. I, I don't like to talk to anyone. So I'll just hide in one corner and, and be very quiet. But, but I think along the way, along the journey, I, I keep on constantly challenging myself, you know, finding that next breakthrough. Um, finding out how, how can I be a better person, a better version of myself, I compare back. And that's what keep me pushing up and constantly push me forward as well. Yeah, and so uh, I'm also the ASEAN mentor, ASEAN entrepreneurship mentor as well. So if you ever wanted to start a business, more than happy, drop me a note. I can share with you more about it. So today, um, I'll do my best to share what's necessary. But again, you are the one deciding what message you want to receive. Very quick intro um, for my company right now. Since 2014, we started the Workplace Happiness Survey. Um, very lucky, 2015, we got a project from PMO that sort of like, uh, give the business a, a turning point. Um, but to be fair, uh, let me just explain. It is our 100th government bid that we managed to eventually won the first one. So it's really 1% chance. So I persevered all the way to the 99 and actually I nearly gave up. Honestly, this, I, I, told, I, I told my guys, I said, uh, this is going to be the last one already. Okay, and, and, and there we have it. We won this project. We run a project that's related to how the country as Singapore uh, attract and retain the right talent. And um, yeah, moving on, we start to have more exposure, working with uh, government agencies, working with NTUC. Uh, myself, I was involved in the ASEAN uh, circle. Um, and 2018, uh, also an another chance, uh, very, very blessed, met a, met a person in Taiwan. Uh, he was one of the former finance ministers of Taiwan, which I didn't realize back then. He actually invited us to set up an office in Taiwan because he likes what we do over in Singapore and how it can help the SMEs. So really, we were given the opportunity. Uh, last two years, we are one of the fastest growing company in Singapore. Um, something that I would say we are proud of, but also I always remind my guys that, you know, we have to stay grounded. These are past achievements. Of course, COVID now present a whole new challenges and we just continue to evolve as well. And, and, I, and I think since we are talking about COVID, I find that this is a very, very, Pardon me, uh, but I find it's, it's still a good period to let a lot of us start to reconnect back. I don't know about you guys, but for me, 
I reconnect a lot back to myself during this period, you know, really prioritizing uh, what I want to do and also reflecting like what have, have I done in my whole life, you know, 40 years ago. Um, I'm, I'm 41 this year. So yeah, so 40 years ago, what have I done, right? So yeah. Um, uh, it depends uh, if you're 20 years old, you say I'm very old already. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So we work in different organizations. Um, I don't want to go into details. Uh, clients we have, um, really, I think this journey I also learned that uh, if you really do a good job and persevere in what you're doing, eventually the door will open. And and I remember one one uh, entrepreneur boss actually told me before. They was saying, "No, I don't want to give you the business now." I want to see that, are you still around after three years? Are you still convicted to what you said from day one? All right. Because many people are out there, they have ideas, they run for a while, half a year later, one year later, there's a roadblock, or money runs out, and like, okay, I give up. So then I realized that in this journey, you really, really need to, be, to persevere. And to do that, you must have very, very strong conviction about what you are trying to do. If you don't believe in it, don't do it at all. Because if not, uh, you won't last beyond one year. And you see, they will only give me opportunity after three years. Like, hey, you're still around. Oh, that means you're doing well. Okay, let's let's talk about it. So something to, to, to take, I think, whatever things you try to do, whether it's an alternate career, whether it's a business or that you want to pursue, I think at the end of the day, it's really about you know, knowing what you really, really want, which I cover a little bit more later. And uh, hopefully you'll find yours as well. Um, the team we have today uh, continue to grow. Um, Attract, we, I use the same methodology and as I help our clients, we attract different people. Yeah, this is the one I mentioned earlier on, which is related to our achievement as one of the fastest growing company. So two years consecutive. And um, one simple model we use in our companies is this thing called the people flywheel, how company grows, right? So it's all start with the right people that lead to the right strategy, right structure, right culture. And that's where HR comes in. So this is essentially in a nutshell, what my company is trying to help companies to achieve. And as they do that, uh, we use the, the secret of workplace happiness. So, so this is a sort of like a summary of the uh, workplace happiness uh, factors that we have done research over in Singapore. And later I'll touch a little bit about happiness. And from there, we help company to grow. So from, from a startup to micro to small to medium. Okay, that's about my company. I'll, I'm done with that. So let me start with the last page, which is the end. Okay. Let me start with the end. So at the end of the day, I always ask people, and I like to quote this uh, part in Alice in Wonderland. And I know not many people read uh, this classic anymore, but uh, there's one quote inside that I find very, very uh, reflective that, that I like it a lot. It's this, it's this particular paragraph. I just read a bit longer. Right? Uh, will you tell me please which way I ought to go from here? So the Cheshire Cat actually says that that depends a good deal on where you want to get to. You know, I don't, if Alice said I don't much care where, then it doesn't matter which way you go. So as long as you get, I get somewhere, oh, you're sure to do that. If only you walk long, long enough. And, and I think I like to start with this because it just shows that if you don't really care where you are going, honestly, it doesn't matter. And you will continue to walk, of course. But again, as you walk, you might be wondering, am I on the right direction? But again, then I ask you, right? At the end of the day, what are you trying to achieve? If you say, I don't know, I have no clue about it, then again, it doesn't matter. So, so this is very important. Why do I share this? Because when you don't have that in mind, I, I say there's two key lessons here that I learned in my own journey, which I share shortly. Um, one is that you need an end goal in mind. But sometimes, and in my journey, it was very interesting. I can tell everyone here, I didn't start with this fantastic vision that forced me or compelled me to leave corporate. Actually, I wasn't. I was more like an Alice. I was walking. I would just continue to walk and try to figure out along the way. And to some extent, I would say, trust the universe to, to give you the right piece of information, the right piece of things that fall into your place at the right time, right? So I just continue to walk and eventually I slowly get to where I am. And I, in fact, for my journey, I, I unfortunately, I can't share that. I have this great vision since young, I want to do this. I quit my job. I started, it's not true. Actually, when I quit my job, um, it is really about starting all over again. And where I lead myself to, I have no clue. So that's how I started. So let me just go a little bit into my life, right? Uh, like many of you, like many of you, um, I started I started 
may I start from my childhood. I, I promise you I won't take uh, two days to talk about my childhood. But I start from my childhood, um, medium class family, uh, nothing fantastic about it. All right. So, uh, but since young, there's one thing that my parents have been telling me, very important. They say, Kuzang, you must study hard. Okay? Study hard, do well in school, get a good degree, get a good job, find a good wife, buy a house. Okay, you'll be happy. And, and, and I think I've grown up with that script. And I think that script is pretty much familiar with many, many of us. I have to admit that. And, and that's the script that, nothing wrong with that script. That script gives you that direction, right? That stability about in you know, life. And uh, it, it's something like you, you work hard now, one day you will find your happiness, right? Happiness is some form of delayed gratification. And, and, um, and I, took, I took that, I do, I do well in school. Uh, I have to admit, I do, I do quite well in school. I graduated with a good, good uh, degree. Uh, I joined uh, Singapore Airlines as my first job. Um, I was promoted uh, very fast in the company. Uh, by the age of 26, I was uh, posted to uh, Indonesia market to, to be the commercial manager there. And, um, and my life is pretty smooth, actually. All right. And over in Indonesia, I, I learned about the high life. I mean, we are an expat. So when the company sends you there, you have your service apartments, you have your helpers, you have your drivers, you have your cars. Um, in order to do business in Indonesia, I learned about golf. I learned about wine. Um, sounds like a good life, right? And actually, when I look back, that was a very, very good life that I had. Yeah. But, but, uh, but I'm very mindful. I, I, I don't know. It's just me, right? I just feel like that life is probably like an illusion for me. All along, I reflect a lot. It's like, uh, is this what I really want in my life? So I have like, sort of like have a glimpse of that. You know, if I were to be very successful climbing corporate ladder, where would I be? And and my circle of friends are in SIA, they call the PPS club people. So PPS club, they call priority passenger service. So these are people who fly on first class and business class. And my job back then as a manager is to take care of these guys as well, right? So I play golf with them. I dine, wine and dine with them. And I think a lot of learnings and reflections I learned from that. And, and really it shows me a, a totally new world that, you know, at the end of the day, you define success yourself. It's not so much about just what the society defines for you. And each one of them, um, some of them are trailblazer. They do their own things. Uh, some of them, um, even at the age of 60 years old, as you remember, one of these guys, he's so creative. He's still trying something new. So, so it just gave me a different type of experience. That, but I still remember one very interesting episode. Uh, it was during a uh, Chinese New Year period in Indonesia. Um, so what happened is that the travel agent, so as usual, right, during those festive season, they will try to, I won't use the word bribe, but they will, they will try to really take care of you, take care of you. So I was invited to dinner after dinner, right, Chinese New Year period. Um, every night is um, shark fins, is um, bird nest, you know, the abalone, all this stuff of food. I still remember during that period, my ex-girlfriend, which is now my wife, all right, uh, she flew in for a short period. And I still remember I have the best meal ever prepared by my ex-girlfriend. And that wow. was and that was a bowl of Maggie noodle. All right, yeah. a, a bowl a bowl of uh, it's uh, I think miojo, a bowl of miojo with an egg and a sausage and a ham. And that's it. And that is my the best meal I ever had. And I I I mean it was surprising, but I, I realized that at the end of the day, it's not so much about the food you eat, it's about you know, who prepares it, the meaning that associate with the food, right? The love that comes with it, that, that makes the food so good. So, so to me, I start to realize that life is not just about earning more and more and more. I just have that reflection. So, so I say if life is like that, the, the most powerful, the most, probably the most richest uh, and, and the most workaholic guy, that's what life leads you to. So maybe you want to reflect, right? What do you really want in your life? And, and I think for me, I'm, I am fortunate that I had that reflection when I was 30 years old. That was 10 years ago. And I don't want to be in this rat race. And I know very clearly the day that triggered my exit was a very odd situation when a friend called me, hey, airline man. I'm like, oh, okay, I don't want to be an airline man. It means I'm stuck already in the airline industry. Right? So I quit. And, and I can tell you I have the biggest job. 
I did the most stupid thing. I quit without a job. I quit without a plan. I really quit without a plan. I just know that I have to quit. Yeah, if I don't quit, I will never figure out what I want to do. So, I mean, I'm not encouraging you guys to do that. Mm. That was crazy of me. But of course, I have my wife. Or by then, I already married. So my wife uh, approval. My dad wasn't that approving. He f- he actually, um, yeah, like I have a hard time convincing him. And we actually fought, of course, quarreled over this. Yeah. Um, so, so we fought very, very badly. And I would say that for the first time in my life, I cried actually for the longest time I remember. I really cried. I, I know that how much approval I'm, I was trying to seek from my parents. But I find that moment was also very, very transforming because that is the moment that I think I've break away from the cage of what my parents and society has sent me to do. I'm being free to mm. do what I want. And I don't know what I want, but I know that I'm being free. And in front of me, the road is, it's up to me to make a decision already. So really, that was the uh, transformation that happened to me. Um, not easy. Uh, I, I, I did well in school. I have a good career in the company. But again, I think at the end of the day, it is our own choice, right? Our life. And I have to be responsible for it. Um, many people tell me that, hey, but what about your family? Uh, no, why, why, is it so, why are you so selfish doing this? So for me, is that I did tell my wife about my decisions beforehand. I consulted her. And uh, I'll tell every entrepreneur wannabe there out there, that is an expiry date to entrepreneurship. That is. So work with your family to tell, ask them to give you uh, X amount of years. For me, I'm lucky I managed to secure five years. Okay. Some people, three years, some people, maybe one year to be given a chance to succeed. You know why? If you don't, after a while, even if you don't mention that topic, after a while, your spouse or your parents will start to nag you. Go and find a job. What are you doing here? Now, after so many years, what are you trying to do here? So really, really. So I think this is something that uh, I, I would say that I'm, I'm lucky to be in and I have a very, very supportive uh, family. So, uh, so good. This is so good. I think this, these are the messages we need to hear. We need to hear. Questions yeah. we ask ourselves very quietly, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. So, so, so Eileen, I quoted your name here, but, I, I, but the surname has changed. It's uh, here. So I like this quote. Um, when you feel that you have reached the end and that you cannot go one step further when life seems to be drained of all purpose, what a wonderful opportunity to start all over again, to turn over a new page. So I really want us to continue to keep the optimism in it that it is as essentially this is the best opportunity to start all over again if you're at this stage. All right. So I see this as an opportunity, not a problem. And, and to talk about it, I think you everyone needs to know about yourself, right? So I will say, I always tell people, uh, in your own career search, alternate career or, or real career, whatever career you call it, it is go back to your core self, your 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 real self. And um, I'll, 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 for me, I look at it as it's a bit more spiritual. I'm not religious, but I just look at it very, very spiritual as well. If you're you, your, your own spirit, who you are really. And I always put this very simple model up front, the three H, the head, the heart, and the hands. And let me explain what, what is this, right? The head is really, first thing you have to understand is, well, how do you define success? And what do you find pleasure in? In fact, how do you define success is very, very important. So I figure out for myself, how I define success is this. I wanted to have more friends that visit my funeral than the bank, the money I left in the bank account when I leave. So this is my measure of success. So essentially for me, it's about impact. I mean, that, that was just a way to put it, but really it's all about impacting people. I need my life every day if I can impact just one person, inspire just one person. I think to me, that is part of what I want to do. So how do you define success? Very important question. If you don't know, then you are like the Alice in the Wonderland. You, let, you get led basically by money, all right? Uh, two, hence. Hence is about your strength, but very important. It's not about what you have learned already. It's about what are you willing to learn? And, and in HR, we always notice when a person is passionate about certain thing, he or she will find all means, all ways to learn. So you don't need to be conditioned by your past. Oh, I graduated from accountancy, therefore I need to be accountant. You don't really need to do that. It's about what are the things that you're passionate about and you're willing to learn. That could build up your new future as well. To be fair, I wasn't even HR. Okay, I didn't even study HR. But I know deep down for me, when I look back at my uh, own achievement in SIA, the one thing I dare to say that I'm most proud of is I managed to build a team, a highly motivated, 
uh, highly close, uh, we work very, very closely, um, that generates extraordinary results. And to me, it's something that I'm really proud of. And even after I left, some of them have moved on and I, we're still in contact and they are doing very well in their life and I'm very, very happy with that. So for me, I know it, that, that's what I want to do. And finally, your heart. It, essentially, it's about meaning, right? Your heart. But what makes you fulfilled? This one, let your heart tell you. Okay, your instinct will tell you. And how do you want to create impact? So knowing yourself is very, very important before you zoom in because this is going to be a journey you have to walk through. But it's a journey that will, for, for me at least, is really, I find freedom. So uh, this guy called Brian McHugh talked about true freedom is when individuals talk in action in alignment with that which is true, correct, of honor, no matter the person. And, and I think really uh, seeking that freedom is, is unbounded. Um, if you are in a job for too long, you may not understand this, but really once you break free, I can't explain the joy that you get from that freedom. Of course, there's not anxiety, but that's what I call true joy as well. Okay, and um, I don't have time to do exercises here, but I would just like you to take some pointers here for reflection. You know, reflect when you were young, what are the things that you enjoy? Three to seven, when you're playful, when you're creative. So we, why can't we be a child anymore, right? Why can't we be playful again? What's stopping us from doing that? And when eight to 12, you know, when you are inculcated in social sector, okay, now you need to toe your line. So what do you enjoy doing most as well? And 13 to 17, you're fighting for yourself, the way to live, the way of life. What do you enjoy doing? So look back into that. It may not disappear. It may just form into a different dots and lines that link you up together. Like Eileen here, she said she wants to be a teacher. She's a teacher today, okay, in a different form, right? So really, I think you have to look back into that as well. Yep. And um, there's a lot of tests. I think I didn't share a few. Uh, this is also one free test. WW is down here via viacorrector.org. You can do it. It's free. Uh, find out where your strength is and how you build on your strength, right? So um, at this juncture, I just want to share about my own reflection of the journey of entrepreneurship. Um, I mean, my time is limited, so I don't want to take up too long. So I just really want to share, pardon me for if you feel obscene by the second picture, but I mean, this is a tarot card, by the way. Um, so one thing I learned is the, what I call the paradox of work-life balance. Many people say, I need to find a work-life balance. So you may not agree with me, but that's just my view. I say this, if work is the opposite of life, and if death is the opposite of life, then work is equal to death. That's very, very sad. All right, I'm using, I use mathematics equation here. So it cannot be that. It really cannot be that. And I realized that when you're able to turn work into part of your life with joy, that's where you went into a, a, a total different state. And um, today for this session, I told Eileen, I'll add more words into these slides so that you have something to read. Uh, I like this quote okay. a lot. Now, one can live magnificent in this world if you know how to work, how to love. To work for the person one loves, to love one's work. And I think they are all interrelated. So I did one thing I learned in the journey. I cannot separate it too much. I cannot separate it too clear. I will do my best to, to integrate them. And I think it's very important. When you draw that line too clear, work will be death. It, it's, it's not going to be fulfilling to you as well. Right? Um, and second reflection I have is this, in, in this whole journey. I left SIA starting to search for myself. So I was finding myself. But I realized that at the end of the day, life isn't about finding yourself. It is about creating yourself. So you have the choice right in front of you. Can you create it? If you say that, just for, my, for me, right? If I feel that I want to impact people, I want to be, be impact employee and employer through workplace happiness, I do it. Is it me, really? Do I find myself? I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. But I created that, right? So... You create it and then therefore you are. So something I reflect that, hey, at any point in time in my life, I look back and say, what can I create now? Not just about finding, right? And the third reflection is really, um, this is not, I, I'm not, I don't mean to do it as life now, it's live now, live now, okay? It's all about the present moment. And I like this quote also. Now for a long time, it has seemed to me that life was about to begin. There was always obstacles, something to do first. Some finished business, time to serve, that to be paid, then life will begin. At last, this is life. So we are living right now. So how do you do 
what you are doing right now. I think it's very, very important for you to reflect and seize the moment today. The only thing we have, to be fair, not, nothing we can, we can carry to, to our grave. The only thing we have today is really our time. And how do you use our time? I think it's the most important thing. All right. And um, let me sum up my session. Uh, it's a short one, but let me sum up my session with this uh, interesting uh, information. I call it, it start off, start from the beginning. And it is the research done by Sonia Lubomirsky, a positive psychologist, about how happiness is being split up. So there's a research on uh, identical and unidentical twins worldwide. This is a book you can find out more um, about how, how do we know how happy we are and how is our happiness being determined. So it says this, 50% huh? of, our, of our happiness was determined by our DNA. <laughs> okay. So if you are born unhappy, ask your parents. All right. I don't know. Ask your parents. If you, if you are born happy also, I think, thanks your parents, right? So it's all DNA. That's why I always tell you, there's, that's why there are some people that we always, uh, pardon me, uh, Hokkien, always chow you know? There are also always some, some people who are always very, very happy. Right? So probably, I don't know, based on the research, is like 50% of DNA genetically determined. 10% is under conditions and circumstances. So what does this mean? This means that your happiness is determined by what you, where you live, your home address, what car you drive, all right, whether you own a car or not, and what car you drive, uh, what, what bags do you carry, all right, uh, what shoes do you wear, you know, those are things that are external. Um, so I like to, I love this, this research. Yeah, every time when my wife was about to buy the next designer bag, I'll tell her, hey, tell, look at it, it's only 10% happiness, don't waste your money, you know, there's a better way to spend your money elsewhere as well. And finally, 40% um, comes from voluntary activities in your own mental state. And this is where I think most of us have the biggest control. And I feel that that is the one that determines a lot of our own state at the moment. Um, it seems like the topic is a bit off. I didn't really tell you about the technique. I just tell you there's no technique. It's all started from your heart. It started from your own core. And all you need to do is just uh, be very focused, know what you want, and walk along with it with faith, and you'll find your ways. And with that, Thank you very much, everyone, for this uh, session. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Bun Siong. Can I? Can I? There's um, there's a question that's very, very popular. A lot of people upvoted it. Ah, uh, sure. And the question is, I'm considering starting a site for full time um, home business. Are there any steps I can make? Do you have any experience to share? To start a business, is it? Hmm. Home base. So, so, so I would say there are two aspects of it. One is yourself, right? You must be very determined that you believe that this is what you want to do. If it's about money, you won't be successful. So you need to be very clear about that. Why are you into that? I mean, you could be passionate about, say, baby products, babies, kids. Then you go into baby products. That's perfectly fine. So you need to know your passion. You must make sure you do on your passion. That's one. But if you want to talk about the step-by-step, -step, the, the technicals. Um, technicals, you still come back to uh, basically your own business model. I mean, you can reach out to me if you want to. I can always share your business models, um, understanding your market, understanding your hard numbers as well. So how much you are making, your profit, your, your revenues, uh, how do you, how, what is your cost structure? Sorry to get a bit technical, but it's really about looking, understanding your business model. You need to make sure it is viable, it is uh, desirable, and it is um, sustainable for you, right? Um, don't jump in. So I see many people during COVID, I was just commenting to my, my guys the other day. I'm, I'm, my office is at Bokki area. So I was like, wow, there's so many FMB closed down and wow, there's so many FMB open up again. And, and I noticed that many of them just came in without doing proper market research. Mm. Because I am here almost every day, clearly um, there's no one around. So why did they even get open here at the first place? It's like, okay, I know rental is very cheap, but the point is, if rental is very cheap, but there's no one, is this still a business you want to do? So many times people jump into a business out of passion. Spirituality, passion, very important. Okay, that's number one factor. Number two, is it viable at this point in time? Now, or maybe you don't choose this location, right? Or maybe choose another place. Or do I embark myself, put a product into, say, build my own website versus going to Shopee, Lazada, you know? So those are real considerations that you need to understand in the business. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but if you need more information specifically, um, you, you, can, you can reach out to me. That's perfectly fine, yeah. Yeah, and, and I know based on those who attended the meet and greet, 
with the aligned group that we, we help. There are some individuals already having some conversations with you. So for those of you who are hearing and meeting, you know, Bun Xiong for the first time, I do encourage you to reach out to him. He's worked, he's walked that journey. So, you know. Yeah, I also mentor quite a number of uh, yeah. startups as well. So uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't put yourself into an unnecessary place where you, you know, you, you can learn from other people's mistakes, right? So why do you want to spend the money to make a mistake as well? Yeah. Very nice. Okay, there's another question, but it's to do with what are the small steps to make before starting a business, you know, regardless of scale. Um, and, and then, you know, I think the piece about, there's a question about, you know, uh, registration, taxation factors, financial factors, and all that stuff. Sounds like it's going to be a very long answer. <laughs> and a very short answer. Good yeah. and good. One thing I learned when I first started business, when I left SIA, I realized that I got nobody, all right? So um, I was trying very hard to look for a friend who is in accountancy. Then I realized I don't really have an accountant friend. Then I was also trying to very hard to get a, a lawyer, right, to help me draft some contracts. Then I don't really have a lawyer friend. The friend I have will yeah. charge me. They, they won't give me for free, right? So I'm like, okay, so what am I going to do? So the first thing I, I, I consciously take a decision like I said, increase my network. So you need to be connected. So in, in, in one thing that I learned about running business, there are so many facets of business you need to take care of. You cannot be expert in everything. What you need to do is build friends who are expert in a different field. Yeah. I mean, build true friends, not, not just in order yeah. to utilize them or anything, but, but really build true friends to that. So for example, you say, oh, all this taxation, Accra, not a problem if you have a friend who is called accountant. They just advise you over, over one lunch session. So I, I, one thing I like to do, I like to buy lunch for other bosses. Uh, that's where I learned a lot of uh, tips. Uh, when I was here, I still remember I was, I'm, I'm very, I like to study to the extent uh, when I graduate, I have two majors and two minors in NUS. And I still remember when I first embarked on to buying my first property, I almost become a property agent. You know why? I want to learn so much uh, that I go and register for the property agency license. Not that I want to be a property agent. Then I realized, just thought about me is this, uh, this, this, this very powerful statement. It said, the more you know, the more you don't know. Mm. So yes. the more you know about things, the more you don't know. And there's no way you can go in unless you're in that space. So the best is talk to people who are in those relevant space. Um, but business basics, I mean, there's a lot of books out there. Know your customers, know your market, know your financials. Uh, those things are still applicable. You can widely read anywhere. You can Google it. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's about how unique is your business model. Okay, to be fair, it's not so much about your product. You can have the best product or services. I can tell you in the real world, nobody cares. But what they care is how you bring these products and services to them and how do you solve their problem. So uh, this is also something that I learned along the way in my own HR journey. Uh, initially, we started as consultancy. Uh, along the way, I realized that hey, consultancy doesn't really help the company to solve the problem. So we also evolve ourselves. So today we do a lot more work on the HR business partnering side. But I'll put that aside. That's another for topic for another day. Lah. Yep, thank you so much for that sharing. We really appreciate that. Again, please reach out to Boon Siong. You can find him on LinkedIn as well. Um, so he is highly, highly approachable. Uh, he does have uh, opinions and he is pretty open with his uh, opinions as well. So thank you so much. Um, if, you, if, if you can find time in your diary to please circle back, we'll probably have the uh, final Q&A um, at around four o'clock. Thank you again. All right. um, you know, if any one of you is keen on the first time leadership uh, book, you can always buy with this special code AOC. He created for, for all of you who are here joining us on this seminar. And also for those of you who are watching the recording. But if you would like to win a book, what we have done is uh, to support our job seekers out of Korea has also purchased five books. So this is what I did. I purchased five books. I'm going to give away uh, four of those books because one book he has uh, autographed it and he's, he addressed it to me. So I'm keeping that. Um, so, you know, I've been receiving feedback from, from listeners who have either participated or watched the recording. So in order to win your book, all you need to do is go watch the speaker's recording, all right? 
and instead of sending me your comments because it's not the same when they hear it directly from the audience so i'm sure speakers like Boon Siong, Daniel and Eng Sheng would rather hear it from you and after watching any of the speakers video write in meaningful comment but if it is just a simple word of thanks i'm sure the speakers will appreciate it as well uh it's amazing that i get all this but if you do have and you appreciate please write a note to them it's not to me it's to them all right comment on their video all you need to do is go watch take your time to watch but we will ask i will ask daniel to pick those whichever right uh the most meaningful comments that he see uh reading those those uh, feedback from the from the viewers because he has walked the journey so i'm sure he can sense these are true comments or not so i'll let him pick the winners and the prizes are all fully sponsored by out of korea all right so on that um what i'll i'll like to do is yes you can subscribe and you would you would actually um have a stand a chance to win the book but do join us also because i'm gonna give daniel his time and um, we are going to also play this live on, on YouTube. He's going to be talking about his book. So Out of Korea have turned five this year. And that's what we are doing. We're doing a lot of free events. I'm throwing out a lot of free resources as well. Uh, anything to help you because you never know. One story is all another job seeker needs to change their life. All right. <music>